So this is not something that has nothing to do with you because you get to use this on a daily basis, believe it or not. So, for example, these companies, you know the famous GoDaddy commercial, right? So you know what the company is for. What, what do you, I mean, of course it's a certificate authority, but what else is this company famous for? GoDaddy. Mm -hmm. Hosting websites. Yeah, yeah, hosting websites, selling domains, those types of things, right? So they're in this perfect business because, I mean, they're dealing with these websites and things like that anyway. So what they can do is, okay, good. <laughs> What they can do is, in addition to their services, they can still do this uh, certificate authority business in which they can say, okay, this public key belongs to this organization because they get to work with the organizations anyway. So to establish that relationship though, you have to do some investigation, you have to uh, require some information from the organization to make sure, right, that organization is really the organization it is claiming to be. Right, so GoDaddy is one, and there are some other companies you're less familiar with, Network Solutions and things like that, okay? <clears throat> However, there is a way, for example, by using something like GPG, GNUPG, you guys have been using the tool, you can create your own certificate, I mean that's also possible, but nobody will trust you <laughs> because you created your own certificate, right? So. So that doesn't do anything in that case. Unless you are doing it just for your own purposes, right? Yeah, if you're just doing it in-house, that's fine, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so what does a digital certificate then contain and what does it look like? So they have to follow this particular standard called X.509, so that's the standard specifying what needs to be inside the certificate and how the certificate has to be formatted and things like that. So later on we'll have a chance to see what it looks like and you guys will be given another lab in which you will be installing a digital certificate for a web server. Okay, so that's something we'll be doing probably next week after the exam, but for now, make sure you understand, okay, what this uh, certificate means. So what does it contain? The most important piece is, I said, what? Public key, yes, that's the most important thing. So the public key of the true party. So the certificate will say, okay, this public key belongs to this organization. That's all it says. But in order to really prove the relationship, you need some additional pieces of information, things like uh, the digital signature of the certificate. Because what if somebody intercepted the certificate itself? right, made some changes, that can happen too, right, so somebody actually has to sign the certificate itself, right there, somebody has to sign the certificate, right, so who signs the certificate in this case? Do you guys know who signs the certificate? Who do you think signs the certificate? The sender? Hmm? The sender? The third party? Well, who's the third party? What, what is it called? Yeah, certificate authority. So the certificate authority actually signs the certificate, okay? So that's something important. So when I say the certificate authority signs the certificate, what does that mean? They, like, they verify it. Yeah, in addition to that, what does that involve? Digitally signing, yes, Chris? They use their private key to encrypt it, and then you decrypt it using their public key. What are they encrypting in this case? The certificate. Or no, not the certificate itself, right? I guess the digest of the certificate. You get the hash value of the certificate. They encrypt it using the CA's private key, right? And then sign it, basically, right? Okay? So on the receiving side of the certificate, what are we supposed to be doing then? on the receiving side of the certificate. Let's say somebody sends you a certificate, 
and the certificate says, okay, this uh, public key belongs to this organization, right? But how do you verify that? Whether that certificate was actually sent by that organization, the certificate authority, how do you do that? You use the public key of the certificate authority? Right, so you have to use the public key of the certificate authority to decrypt the, what, hash value, right, of the certificate. So, that means that you have to have a public key of the certificate authority already somehow, right? How though? <laughs> That's the next question. How do we get to have the public key of the certificate authority already? On our computer. Unless we install it, right? How? Anybody, any idea? How we get to have the public keys of the certificate authorities on our computer? Good. Is it like to browse it? Yeah, so the web browser, whenever you guys install the web browsers, they have this built-in set of public keys already installed with the web browser. So the web browser is the key, actually, yes. So when you install your web browser, there's a lot uh, additional coming with the web browser, especially in this case, the public key, okay? So remember that, because that's an important question.